going on main salians main sailors and the people of youtube marshall main sales here and today i'm going to discuss a pretty awesome horror movie that i feel is very underrated because that's the reason it's very underrated is because it was buried by blockbusters that we know today and that movie is called the night flyer was also a stephen king uh short story um never read it until I've seen the movie. I watched the movie before I read the book because I seen the movie before I really was interested in reading when I was a kid. Um, and I had obviously seen it on HBO. And it's an incredible vampire movie. It's, uh, it holds to me to be one of the best. And like I said, very underrated. And it's pretty incredible. So get ready to be scared. <laughs> So the Night Flyer was initially supposed to be released in 1997 uh, due to a very full schedule of releases they decided not to and put it on the back burner, them being Paramount. It was initially funded by European investors which got the attention of uh, Paramount. But like I had said, blockbusters were right in the works and they knew that these movies were going to be big so they said, uh, you know, hold off on it. Not holding off on it, they did a straight to HBO release, um, also with a DVD release, I do believe. And what had happened was it was released around, I think, 1998, February 1998. So the plot is Richard Dees is a cynical tabloid reporter whose motto is never believe what you publish and never publish what you believe. Merton Morrison, editor in chief at the tabloid Inside View, confines a case to him about a bloody murder in a rural airfield committed by a passing aviator who thinks he is a vampire and registered under the name of Dwight Renfield. Dees refuses but reverses his decision when two or more murders are committed in another airfield, the victims drained of their blood. He recovers the case from Morrison, who in the meantime had entrusted it to the novice reporter Catherine Blair, and leaves in the footsteps of the killer aboard his own light aircraft. Dees gathers accounts, pays bribes, and even profanes a grave for the purpose of this investigation. He senses that the case is stranger than it seems and receives messages telling him to stop his investigation. Dissatisfied with Dees' attitude, Morrison sends Catherine Blair to conduct her own parallel investigation. Dees offers the young woman to join forces to hunt down the killer. I'm not going to go ahead and read too much into that for you because the plot that is starting to give the plot away but it's an incredible plot and it's very good so the reception not very good so on rotten tomatoes the film holds an approval rating of 33 percent based on six reviews with a weighted average rating a at a 4.1 out of 10. on metacritic which assigns a normalized ratings to reviews the film has weighted an average score of 36 out of 100 based on seven critics in indicating generally unfavorable reviews Stephen Holden of the New York Times gave the film a negative review, criticizing the film's poor adaptation and lack of thrills. So let's get into the release. The film, which was independently financed by European investors, attracted strong interest from Paramount Pictures. Due to a crowded release schedule, the studio could only bring the film to theaters in time for Halloween 1998. Director Mark Pavia and producer Richard Rubenstein opted not to take Paramount's offer, as keeping the film on the shelf until October 1998 would break obligations they had with their European investors. The Night Flyer would instead premiere in the United States on HBO during November 1997. The film was later picked up by New Line Cinema for an American theatrical release on February 6, 1998, where it performed poorly. And then The Night Flyer was first released on DVD by HBO Home Video on May 27, 1998, since the film had been released multiple times by HBO and Warner Home Video and once distributed by the Mosaic Movies in 2000. So I had my time a little bit backwards. But the idea being, you have to remember 19, the end of 1997 and all of 1998 was a blockbuster uh, time for movies. At the end of 1997, Titanic was released right in December. So you have to understand when Paramount says we got a blockbuster coming out like the Titanic and then 1998 was the actual year was riddled, riddled with blockbusters such as Armageddon, Saving Private Ryan, Godzilla, There's Something About Mary, A Bug's Life, Deep Impact, Mulan, Dr. Doolittle, Shakespeare in Love, and obviously the fourth edition of Lethal Weapon. So you have to understand uh, when you have a movie like this, which back then was probably considered an indie movie, 
it was very hard and difficult for uh, directors and producers to get their movies slated when they wanted to. So, you know, who are they going to pick? You know, Steven Spielberg or this guy. Night Flyer just got jumbled in the mix. And the reason I believe that it did poorly re reception wise was it just wasn't released when it should have been. And I, I feel like all the movies just buried it. Miguel Ferrer's acting has always been a consonant uh, resounding the savior of the movie throughout everything. The guy was phenomenal. He's a phenom He was a phenomenal actor. He unfortunately had passed a few years back due to cancer, but he was a phenomenal actor. And uh, he really showed himself in this movie, and he, it's one of his strongest roles, I believe. And I've seen most of his movies, especially Blake Check, one of my other... He, he's support a supporting actor there, but he was really good. And that's one of the reasons, again, I feel that Night Flyer wasn't received well uh, through the general audience. But now it's a cult classic. If you're a horror fan, you know the Night Flyer. You know it. And it's a very, very good movie. And in fact, they had a sequel to be released in the early 2000s. A sequel script entitled Fear of Flying was written by Pavia and King in the mid-2000s, focusing more on Catherine Blair character as well as the origins of the Night Flyer killer. However, the duel failed to gain the required $10 million in financing from Hollywood Studios due to the original 1997 film being viewed as merely a minor cult hit. So, Pavia and King were writing a script for the second one, Do you, and they just could not raise $10 million. Do you understand what would happen if they did that again? If, if Stephen King now would rewrite and maybe even work with Pavia? Maybe even work with another director like an Eli Roth or um, Del Toro. You know, it'd be great, I feel. So I feel like Stephen King, get back on it, buddy. We need a second one. So like I said, I'm going to give uh, The Night Flyer 9 out of 10 stars. Only because it's it's incredible. I don't know. It's one of those movies you can watch over and over again that I do all the time. If I have, you know, I'm bored or I'm just in the horror mood, I'll just be like, well, let's put on some Miguel Ferrer's The Night Flyer because it's great. So give the film a chance, please. If you haven't seen it, give it a chance. I'll leave a link below and give you the link to Amazon to buy it. Of course, I'm sure you can also find other ways to watch the movie. I won't condone it, but hey, everybody has their thing. So this is Marshall Main Sales. Keep it locked until next time.